Hello everybody and welcome to a new live meeting with Dion. Dion, what are you going to show me today? Yes, yeah, so today will be a very quick session just to introduce IFC aggregate and uh, what it is and I guess what it's useful for. Uh, I guess this one's a really simple concept. Um, the concept of an aggregate is exactly like the word aggregate in the English language. Mm -hmm. It means you can group uh, many sub objects into a parent object. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess the easiest way to understand an aggregate is to look at the, uh, the tree of IFC items. So whenever you see a uh, like a site that's inside the project or a building that's inside the site or a building story that's inside a building, that's an example of an aggregation. It's two objects of the same IFC type. So both of these, so all, all these three are um, uh, spatial type objects, you know, sites and buildings and building stories. Yeah. And uh, one is being grouped inside another and this creates a type of hierarchy. And uh, that's one of the that's one of the rules of the of an aggregate that they must be the same type. Another rule of an aggregate is that it must be hierarchical. So it can't you can't have a site inside a building and a building inside of a site and then it goes in a circle because that doesn't make any sense. Um, so that's how you can have. So that's known as a spatial aggregate. Uh, but there is another type of aggregate when you uh, aggregate regular uh, building objects instead. So if I have an object like this, which is a roof, uh, at the moment, I believe this uh, particular roof is just a, oh no, I take that back. Uh, there is a roof here. So this is a regular roof. Uh, which is just a roof by itself with yeah. no aggregation. But there is a roof here, which is made out of multiple sub objects. In this case, it, you can see on the bottom right, it's made out of three sub objects. So if I just expand that out and I jump to this one here, you can see that this roof is made out of, uh, sorry, two, two sub objects. There's uh, a, one roof slab here and uh, one generic roof slab here. And both of them together combined make up this roof. And you'll notice that there is no shape of the roof itself. The shape of the roof is made out of the sum of its uh, parts. So mm -hmm. this is one part and this is another part and together they make a hole. And uh, I guess a whole roof. Yeah. And so that's the main concept and usually in your editing program you'll see it as another level of hierarchy that goes uh, deeper just like this one mm -hmm. but just to clarify uh, just because you see it go a level deeper doesn't mean it's an aggregate aggregates are only when it's of the same type so for example a building story in a building that's an aggregate relationship yeah. whereas a stair inside a building story those are two different objects. A building story is a spatial object and uh, or a spatial element and a stair is just a regular element. And so this is not an aggregate relationship. This shouldn't be there, a, uh, sorry for interrupting. Shouldn't there be uh, then be the, in the, with the same level with the building story if they are not aggregates? Uh, no, 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 there's a, the, they are, it's still contained, the, 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 the stair is still contained in the story, yes. just that to be very technically correct, you cannot call it an aggregate. You use another word for it, which, which means something very similar in practice. Uh, but from a technical perspective, there is a, there is a difference. Um, so you would call this as being spatially contained, <laughs> if, if that's uh -huh. semantically uh, very, very specific. But don't worry, I mean, if, if, if I guess spatial containment simply means you have an object inside a space that and everything, almost everything else you, you would, uh, that you see in your tree would be an aggregate. So a building story is an aggregate inside of IFC building. And in this case, this stair, inside the stair, there is 
uh, well, there's four railing, uh, sorry, two railings, two slabs, and uh, some stair flights. Mm -hmm. So in Blender, I can right click and I can go and uh, select all the objects in there. So here are all the objects that comprise of that stair. And you can see how, yes, that's right. Absolutely, that stair is made out of uh, two landing slabs, uh, uh, one, two, three individual stair flights, as well as two railing elements. So this is a perfectly correct um, aggregation of a stair. Yeah. And this is also a very common example of where, where you might find an aggregate. Um, there are a few common ones and uh, I'll make a list of them. I, I think that'll, that'll be a good idea. A stair is one where you'll see that type of decomposition. You'll mm -hmm. see slabs and stair flights and railings. Uh, then you will also often see roofs as being aggregates. Um, and there's two ways of doing it. One option is you have a single roof, just like this one. And the, the situation where you do that is where you have a single object which contains everything that comprises that roof. And so in this case, uh, that is accurate. As you can see, if I, if I open, if I lift up the roof of this building, uh, there is nothing there's there's no differentiation mm -hmm. uh the, the, there's no the, yeah that's it this if i remove it the roof is gone mm -hmm. uh, this one i would argue is actually not uh, very correctly done uh they split it up into two slabs uh as you can see uh, a slab and slab whereas i would argue that's not quite correct uh, and if you read the specification it explains that if you do want to split up a roof into many subcomponents you would then split it up into things like uh, rafters and purlin beams, uh, purlin members, or so mm -hmm. rafter members and purlin members. And then if let's say you have some sheeting on top, that would be a covering element, mm -hmm. but you would not actually get a slab like this unless this is actually a big concrete slab, which I highly doubt. I don't think that's how they're gonna build it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it makes uh, sense. But yeah, but, so the only reason you would use a slab as, as part of a whole roof is if your roof is indeed a, uh, a does use like a, a, a strong structural uh, filled structural slab, like a, um, uh, like a concrete slab roof. Mm -hmm. But this is uh, not a good example. Don't, don't follow this. Yeah. Um, other examples of every, Aggregates would be ramps. So ramps follow similar rules to uh, stairs, as in you would have the ramp as one, uh, uh, and you would have multiple handrails or, or uh, sorry, IFC railing elements. Mm -hmm. And that would create your ramp as a whole. Uh, but then there are also uh, individual object types. Ah, sorry, uh, curtain walls is another example, very, very common example of an aggregate where you would have, where you would break it down into mullions and uh, plate objects for the, the glazing panel or the spandrel of the curtain wall. Mm -hmm. But um, this is also often something that creates a lot of problems in, in BIM models when, because sometimes you don't have a lot of control in your, in your BIM program over how these aggregates are created. So for example, you might have uh, like, or, well, this is one example, right? Mm -hmm. The author probably didn't realize that the program was going to split it up into two objects and it doesn't make a lot of sense. And, and it wasn't the author's fault, it's the program's fault. It's, it's uh, bad development uh, or, or not user-friendly um, design. Another example would be in, in a curtain wall, very often, uh, let's say, if this is an elevation of a curtain wall, uh, I'm drawing in some mullions rather badly. Mm -hmm. And then let's say I have a glazing panel or something, and that's another mullion up the top, and this is a spandrel. And so it would break it up into one, one object, two objects, three objects, four objects, five objects, six, seven, eight. And, and, and that, or, or even, you know, I might chop it here. And that, means that you would get just for one curtain wall panel, which in reality 
in sight, they would go and ship it just as one object. It splits it up into many unnecessarily complex uh, sub-objects, which you're never going to schedule out that way. Nobody mm -hmm. thinks of the design that way, unless you are a curtain wall manufacturer and you just, uh, you, even then, right? <laughs> and, and in that case, your BIM model would only consist of that one curtain, typical curtain wall. Yeah. So due to a lack of control in the authoring application, often aggregates can get out of control and you end up with uh, aggregates with a ton of stuff in there, which is very badly organized. A curtain wall is a, is a, is a good example okay. of, of a bad thing. So uh, what are you saying with other words is that uh, the, 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 the BIM tools or the softwares, the, uh, the design softwares, when you export, they don't really respect this uh, aggregation system. Well, they do. They do. It's just that people don't realize that they are creating these aggregates unknowingly uh -huh. and they leave it to the de defaults. And sometimes the defaults can produce not very good results. Yeah. Um, and, is, and that creates problems. Would it would be difficult, for example, in uh, like, do you need to look very uh, deep under the hood in Revit to find these settings and to uh, to make your own uh, your own system like uh, to to uh, to apply as much as possible from this so you get it as close as possible to this when you export it i think that depends on a case by case for each authoring application in the example i gave earlier uh for curtain walls uh, in the example of Revit, i don't think it's actually possible to change that um unless you i mean if you're using the default curtain curtain yeah. wall tool in Revit, yeah. you'd, you'd have to create, mm, have to think how you might do that. Uh, yeah, then, you could probably, hmm. mm, it's a bit messy. But what you do then, uh, what is the workflow in this case? So, uh, but first and foremost, let's say, who is requiring this? Who is requiring that you deliver in this kind of, in this, uh, to this uh, level of detail? And uh, after that, how is the right workflow? So you need to export from Revit, use uh, BIM, uh, the, bl the Blender BIM uh, add-on to fix this. Is any, like, are there any owners that really require this? It's very important or? Um, at the moment, I haven't, I don't think I've come across anybody specifically requiring rules around aggregation, I have mm -hmm. to admit. Um, no one has really specified it. However, that said, it is a very useful way of categorizing sub-objects in mm -hmm. a larger object. So, um, yeah, and it's best just practices, like, right? It's best practice, of course. I understand that, but I'm I'm just talking from a practical point of view. How much are we applying if uh, if we are aware about it? Often, I think many people are are simply not paying too much attention. Mm -hmm. to aggregations so whatever gets created gets created and they and they tr and they leave it at that um, mm -hmm. I, i'd love to be proven wrong i'd like to hear some, some people uh explain some mm -hmm. interesting uses of aggregates that they yeah, had. yeah but uh, one one thing where it is used a lot is in steel work so what i've shown you are just uh general examples mm -hmm. but there are some dedicated objects in ifc which you are meant to use as an aggregate. So for example, one of those is called an IFC element assembly. And that's used a lot in steel detailing mm -hmm. where you have, I guess, an assembly is a, is, is, is a good word for it. And then when in, in how that assembly is fabricated, you would have, let's say a, a main beam, then you would have accessories like brackets and, mm -hmm. and stiffeners and little web plates and, and, and uh, mechanical fasteners and who knows what. And all that together would be, would turn into uh, a steel assembly. And that is very good for representing how something is fabricated mm -hmm. and then delivered. Yeah, you, you know what, what just uh, crossed my mind right now? I was thinking like, it would be really interesting to, to, to uh, work together to try to fabricate a, a beam execution plan in or uh, exchange information requirements in such a way, so, so detailed, like the ideal beam execution plan that has this absurd standard for, for all these requirements and see, actually go through that. What do you think about that? 
Oh, I think that'll be a great exercise, but I think right now a lot of us are still struggling to name our files the right thing and, and call our projects. Look at this project. This is project 0001. Hmm. The building doesn't have a name. There's, oh, there's, there's clearly two buildings, one which looks kind of chopped in two, uh, but there's only one building. I mean, we're failing on such fundamental things like that. Um, but yeah, it would be a great exercise to, it would to be push it. And, yeah, and people have done that. Yeah. People have done that. Uh, I think Bond Brian did a very interesting case study where they built a little building out of Lego and they modeled it, uh, trying to follow as many best practices as they could huh. uh, with OpenBIM. Interesting. And they, they published a whole bunch of blog posts on it. It's really interesting. It's fascinating. You okay. should absolutely read it. Okay, definitely. Uh, and don't forget to send me a link to it. Uh, but yeah, I, like it would be really nice to, to build the, the ideal BIM execution plan, the, the craziest from, from an open, open uh, BIM uh, standpoint. And yeah, it would be interesting. I just find it crazy that we need to have these BIM execution plans in the first place. I mean, Why? we really need to oh, tell yeah. people to name things uh, correctly. Are you kidding <laughs> like... me? <laughs> no, but uh, uh, to get there, to get to the point where nobody needs to think about this anymore, yeah, you need to have it. It's yeah. it's no yeah, it's not it's not true. possible and and for uh, for contracts reasons as well it, it would be very Correct. difficult to not to not stick to the to to this so that's why uh, 9650 is so important to try to enforce this but yeah it's it's really interesting it's uh, it, that would be really nice I don't have a but just have something like to start from 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 the start yeah uh, like have section for everything like we started this uh, this uh, this series right about geolocation everything in detail and how you can do it as well not not only I that i think that's that's what the the micro mbds are attempting to do and and, and programs like bim tester which which we should definitely showcase um i believe yeah, yeah there's some uh, really neat things definitely definitely we we must uh we must talk about uh, the next uh, episodes and uh, yeah i definitely want to uh, to do some of the requests we got like uh, something uh, uh, how you can make a better workflow for revit and this kind of things like you said mvds and yeah. other things so yeah that that sounds very good uh, hey before i forget before i forget there was sure. something i didn't mention about aggregates yeah. sure um an aggregate is not like a group in IFC. Uh, the aggregate itself is an object with an IFC class. So for example, this is an IFC, one IFC roof object. So if I could draw a little diagram, here's my IFC roof. And that's this guy. Mm -hmm. Whereas this one are two objects both of which are an IFC slab, which are then in part of IFC one roof. single IFC roof. Mm -hmm. And the reason why that's important is because that means that just in the same way that this can have attributes and it can have uh, property sets and, and all that, all those relationships, so can this one and this one also has attributes and property sets and so on so for example if i click on this guy he is part of this roof so i'll just jump to him in yeah sorry he was in here and he's in here so his roof has his own global id has his own name and and so on and so forth so uh, in this case i uh, and, and there you go. And also has um, property sets and very funnily has quantities in the property set, which is a bit strange, but who am I to judge? <laughs> so that gives you uh, an idea that this is an element in its own right. And that's pretty important. The only one thing it does not have is that whereas sub elements will have a representation mm -hmm. or geometry, this one does not have a rep representation or geometry. It's not allowed to. The, whatever representation or geometry can only be defined as part of its sub elements. Aha, uh -huh, okay. 
So that that is just a sum of sub elements. Uh, yeah, just like a a parent, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. I guess I asked already uh, uh, during the presentation, and I don't have any other questions for this topic. Uh, we don't have so many viewers. I see only three. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, write a message in the chat in in Twitch. Uh, otherwise, we we will uh, wrap it up. Uh, let's just wait a few seconds and see if we get any replies. There is a question yeah. here. Okay. Um, is it possible to make the scene text bigger? Oh, sorry about that. I'm not sure what you mean by scene text. You mean the stuff up here? Um, I, yeah, yeah, I, that, that is definitely something. I, I don't know how to make that bigger. Sorry. Um, maybe, the, sorry, I, I, I don't know. Uh, Cyril says, uh, you say that aggregates need to be of the same type, but you showed two examples where IFC building aggregates multiple IFC building story and IFC roof aggregates multiple IFC slab. You should explain what you mean by the same type. Uh, yes, sorry. Um, I should explain. There's two, uh, there's two main um, types of aggregation that, you, that you're very likely to come across. The first is where you aggregate a spatial element. So that is IFC spatial element. At, and uh, depending on which version you are on, it might be named IFC spatial structure element. Uh, and spatial elements and spatial structure elements are, if I go over here into uh, Blender BIM, why don't I just select an object? Um, here, eh, it's broken, look at that. So if I go under a spatial element, the, these are your options. So this is one type of uh, aggregation. So you can put any one of these into any other one of these. There, there are a couple of uh, mm, rules about that. Like you can't put a site into a building. There is like a, a hierarchy that you're meant to follow, that a site is bigger than a building and a building is bigger than a building story and a building story is bigger than a space. And I have to double check for spatial element and spatial zone. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically, uh, when you put one of the spatial elements into another, and this is what I mean by the same type, it all inherits from spatial element, uh, that's known as an aggregation. Uh, that, that is one type of aggregation. If I change to IC element, here are a whole bunch of um, objects, all of the same type of IFC element. And that would be your second type uh, of aggregation, which is IFC element. So I can put a, uh, a plate, an IFC plate inside an IFC curtain wall over here, for example. Mm. And the plate would represent uh, the, the glazing panel inside the curtain wall. Mm -hmm. So when I, yeah, I guess that's what I mean by the same uh, type. It's, it's, it's a simplification really. Yeah. Uh, I have a question from Nigel Lamb. Uh, are the aggregate part most important when quantities takeoffs are done? Like a roof can include gutters flashing roofings, etc., as separate parts and aggregated into an IFC roof? Uh, yeah, you can, and, and that's one of the use cases of an IFC roof. There's two use cases. The first one is where the IFC roof contains everything, the whole shebang. And then option two is where an IFC roof gets broken down to many things. And one of these things may very well be um, the gutter. I think, I think you're, yeah, I think you can do that. I don't see why not. Um, it is important in quantity takeoff, uh, getting, getting aggregates correct. Um, simply because these objects can also have their own attributes and P sets and quantity sets. So if you're use depending on which quantity takeoff software you're using, so I'm aware that and I'll have to double check if this is a bug or not, 
the, in rib I2 doing quantity takeoff, it may, and, and if you're summing up, uh, let's say a, um, a property of this. So if I click on this guy here, um, let's see if I, let's, let's see if this guy has quantities. So this one, okay, the slab itself doesn't have any quantity uh, anywhere. Um, whether and it's it's in the property or quantity takeoff, but the roof does. So it may occur as a bug in the software uh, that it will double count. And I have come across some very strange quantity takeoff uh, results in quantity takeoff programs due to this double counting issue, or or people don't realize that one that um, that one is simply like a, a host or, or a, of all of its subparts. So they might double count the quantity. Sorry, I, I, I'm not sure if I answered that right. Yeah. Uh, do you have other questions in uh, your? Uh, Blender preferences interface display resolution scan. I'm going to try that. Interface display. Uh, let's say 0.5. Oh, I made it worse. Oh, yeah. look at that. All right. <laughs> okay. Woof. Look at that. This is what I'll be doing from now on. Yeah. Look here. So you learned something as well from. Uh, I learned sessions. something too. That's it's cool. always good to be knowledge sharing. Yeah. Always learn something new every day. Yeah. Cool. Then I think we're good to go now. Uh, thank you for today. <laughs>